<laughs> My whole potato salad. <laughs> need, a, need a few more minutes, Jay, to chew your food and stuff. Uh, Girl Scout cookies, because I'm, I'm, I'm in my like the biggest KFC I had ever seen in my life. You hear it? No. 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 <laughs> I'll be Boba Fett. I'll be a bounty hunter. I'm going to come get you. Dang. You know why he be Boba Fett? You know, now, it ain't about the bounty hunter thing. It's about he get to wear a mask the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Kings and Queens, welcome back to the Liquor Kings podcast. I am one of your hosts, Willie. And of course, I am joined by my man, my brother, DMV Zone, J. Dot. How you doing, King? Proud to be from the DMV, Chocolate City. And just for the record, uh, Richmond and Virginia Beach are not part of the DMV. I just feel like I need to say that. <laughs> How's your mental health, brother? I forgot to ask you last episode. How's your mental health? It's doing okay. Yeah, no, nobody's confused me as a person from Baltimore in a long time, and that usually, you know, makes me happy. So, uh, haven't been to Cleveland in quite some time. So, you know, <laughs> the more distance I keep in that place, the better I am. Big brother, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. How are you? How's everybody? I'm good. I'm good. How's your mental health? Uh, it's even. You know, by the grace of God, everything is good. You know, stabilized, making it work. Keeping it even. Okay, okay. Joe, how you doing, brother? Doing good. How about you, Will? I'm here. <laughs> Struggling. <laughs> he said he's struck. <laughs> Struggling. <laughs> How's your mental health, Joe? Good. Yeah, I'm good. Just a lot of work. You know, lots of stuff going on and uh, lots of podcasting stuff. And, you know, just, just busy, man. But mental health's good. I'm good as well. I'm I'm just tired today, man. This you ever have one of those weekends where you're off, but you don't really get like a lot of rest, like you feel mm -hmm. like you should have gotten. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That's that's where I'm at. You know, what I'm saying I, I did some gaming, then I got like this crazy knot in my back that I cannot get out of. I can't. I don't. I don't use all my damn must. Uh, I don't use uh, back massages, tension pads, and. Man, I just, I tossed and turned to probably about three o'clock this morning. And I only got like maybe three hours of sleep. So um, when I say I'm struggling, I'm struggling. Deep, deep down, I ain't going to lie, if we being transparent, I was like, for a little bit, like, we get a message from Joe, like, hey, man, I'm not going to be able to make it because we're taking my mom out to the Sizzler. Uh, <laughs> to the who? <laughs> to the Sizzler. Uh, I think, I think we all had a moment like that today. I know I did. If it, yeah. I think everybody being yeah. honest. It's like, man, if somebody yeah. said it's Mother's Day, I can't do it. I yeah. be all that. Yeah, yeah. Like if Big Brother's like, man, I went and got me massage, and when she when she was doing my feet, she broke my pinky toe, <laughs> and I ain't even better make it. I'd be like, damn, dog. But at the same time, I'd be like, yes, because I was just, uh, yeah. Nobody wanted I, to pull the trigger. <laughs> I what? I'm not that far. I wasn't that far from bed. Now, I'll be honest with you. I was all snug, snuggled up on the couch with my <laughs> with my blanket, <laughs> watching a little uh, movie and shit. Yeah, I was good. But all right, let's get in. Let's, uh, yeah, uh, let's go and get into it, Big Brother. What you got for us <clears throat> this evening? Ah, oh, here we go with the the hot thing that everyone is using nowadays. D E I. So can we all just give that silent hush of, oh, not DEI. You know, DEI, what everyone seems to be talking about nowadays, standing for diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we're bringing it to the table just to break it down. You know, D, diversity, equity, you know, recognizing the gaps and closing the gaps, putting things in place to make sure everyone gets the same opportunities. Inclusion, making people feel welcome, making them feel safe in space making them feel seen. So, you know, we just want to break it down to DEI. You know, I think it seems to be a lot of people only feel as though DEI is only something that really helps and put in place for black and brown people, you know? And I feel as though a lot of the news outlets and other groups are using that as a gaslighting tool so I want to bring it to everybody here. 
and ask you, do you feel as though that there it, we're being basically set up to make it look like it only helps and put in place black people because they can't do it on their own? And do you feel as though that diversity training is still necessary? And have you ever felt as though that DEI has helped you anywhere in your life? Let's start with you, Joe, first. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think, I think there should be diversity training. Um, I don't think uh, that comment that you said about, you know, if they're giving the opportunities to black people because they can't do it for themselves. I don't even think that's there either. Um, I don't think they want to give anybody the opportunity to be honest. You know I mean, um, I hear a lot about, a lot of people complain about, you know, people, you know, black and brown people taking, you know, people's job because of diversity or, you know, they look at us first before they look at somebody else. And that's not true. You know I mean, that's, that's still not true. Um, I just think it's just a topic of, uh, they're just bringing it up, right? It's awareness, but I don't think we get the opportunity out there, man. I, I really don't. And I think a lot of this stuff is just a, a freaking scam just to, to put it in so you don't sue the damn company. You know what I mean? To have these classes and all this kinds of stuff. Um, so I don't know. I, you know, I, I live it and I've, I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten away with anything due to who I am or the, where I'm from or the color of my skin. You know, it's always been rough. You know what I mean, so I haven't gotten like a free, a free ride or tuition or nothing, man. You know, it's so no, I haven't. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how I feel about it. But do you feel as though that, you know, outlets are weaponizing it, you know, to either, you know, drive a deeper wedge between people or to make it look or to put it in a negative light to say, hey, this is in place so they can get more than you. So do you feel as though that that's the way that they're using it almost like a weapon? Yeah, I mean, always. I mean, that's that's this is what this is about. And you know, and, and people complain about it, you know, why, why don't we get the same benefits? Why don't we get the same stuff? And, you know, it becomes a, a huge, a huge problem. Right. And, uh, the, the, the fact is, is that we actually don't get the opportunity that we deserve to get right. The same, uh, help and our communities and stuff like that. If not, we wouldn't be talking about any other stuff. Right. But obviously they use it, right. They use it to, uh, to split us apart even more. Right. Cause you can, you can use it for that. And, uh, and that's what people want. That's what some people want, man. They they don't want this. We don't want us to be united in any kind of way. They want us to, we want us as far as, as far as they can, you know, from, from each other. So. Yeah. J dot same to you. what you think? How you think they, they using it? Um, I mean, I, you know, but to be honest, I mean, maybe it's just cause I'm in Texas and that's probably something they avoid talking about down here, diversity and, and equity and inclusion. But, uh, it hasn't been, you know, a topic I've been surrounded by. Um, if you ask me, I think these days it it usually includes more of like the LGBT community or or making sure women are included in things. And and um, I mean, I don't necessarily see those as negatives, but I, I haven't had the experience where it's been used. I, I remember the days where affirmative action, you know, was a was a dirty word. Like anytime affirmative action, you know, came up. You know, you were either going to have the white people that were mad because they felt like an opportunity was being taken from them because of that, or you're going to have sometimes, you know, uh, black or brown people, you know, um, complaining that, you know, people looked like, people looked at them as the only reason they got the position was because of their skin color and not because of, of their merit. But, you know, I, a lot of that for me um, has died down. I know I went to Marquette, which is a majority uh, white Jesuit school in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I remember being there and having a white roommate um, for the first time and and uh, he and I having discussions. And, you know, and he would say to me then, it was probably easier for you to get into the school than it was for me. And he was from Milwaukee. Um, but there were more programs geared toward, you know, trying to get minorities into the school because they needed them, uh, you know, in order to get certain government funding. So I, you know, while I benefited from it, and um, and I didn't feel I didn't feel at all, you know, guilty from benefited benefiting from it. You know, I could definitely see how uh, other people, you know, use that kind of stuff to uh, to flare up 
you know, like you said, some of the division between us. There are a lot of people who look at black and black and brown people like we skipped, uh, we we cut in line, like we 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 yeah. took over their place in line. Uh, they were sold the same American dream that we were sold, and they've been working toward it. And the same systems that really have been keeping us from having anything have been keeping them from having much as well. You know, I think that the line that separates us more than anything these days is socioeconomic. You know, it's rich and poor, and uh, and we might need to go back to the. You might need to you know revisit the 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 Fred Hampton and the Black Panther philosophies when they were trying to do the Rainbow Coalition, where it's not so much a color thing; it's the oppressed versus the oppressors. And uh, a lot of time, though, that line is drawn via socioeconomic lines. So. Uh, I say all that to say, yeah, DEI has not been a subject that's popped up in my in my life recently. Um, so I don't I don't view it as that source of division, but I can see how it could be. Can I just follow up with when your roommate said to you, it was easier for you to get into this school than it was for me? Like, how did you take that when he said that to you? I mean, because to me, just hearing it, I would have been just like what do you mean you know no, we, so we that... had several conversations i think it, for both of us it was one of those situations where we hadn't had this opportunity before we hadn't had this kind of close contact with a person you know on the other from the other side of the fence to be able to discuss some of these issues so i knew at the point that that came up in conversation and i was there was no reason for me to take it as a malicious statement, I know he didn't mean anything hurtful or uh, upsetting by it, that this was his point of view from the life that he'd had to live as a resident there in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Like there weren't as many programs. Like I, I got to the school through uh, something called the Freshman Frontier Program. And it was it was designed for students who uh, had had tested well but hadn't performed very well academically in, in high school and giving them an opportunity to prove that they could perform on the, on the collegiate level. And so it was a program that really was uh, geared more toward, you know, minority students. And um, so I understood, you know, what it is that he meant by, it. and I, I understood necessarily the, the reality of it, that there probably were more play. I do the funniest thing for me about being on that campus is whenever I go to frat parties, I would get treated like I was a uh, celebrity because all those frats were looking for that diversity pledge. They needed to have a certain number of people that look like me in their fraternity. So I would show up to frat parties and drink for free and get tours of the frat house and everything. Like they, they put their arm around my, you know, around my neck and, and walk me around the, uh, walk me around the, the, the whole party. Like I was, like I was something to show off. So I can imagine, you know, what that may look like to some white kid who came to that same frat house hoping to be a part of that fraternity. I didn't care. But all of a sudden, you know, they wanted me and they were like, yeah, you just another one. So I, I understand what it can look like and what it may possibly feel like for them. But uh, I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, there's still a lot of things that we're denied. Redlining is still a real thing. There's still a lot of mm -hmm. places that we're kept out of. And so it's a shame that the only way to get equity is to force people uh, you would, you would hope you could be able to appeal to folks' humanity to get you to treat everybody that equals, but that's, you know, historically that's never been the case. True. And Will, once again, you know, do you, DEI, do you feel as though it's used from media, you know, to drive a wedge and it's painted as only benefiting Black people? And have you, you know, benefit from it? Can you see how you benefited from it? Oh. Uh -huh. Excuse me. First, I also want to follow up with J. Dot with the uh -oh. <laughs> with the uh, Marquette question. Um, but isn't it also true that that out of that out of state tuition is cheaper for students that's out of out of state because they're trying to draw in more people from out of state? I, that that very well could be the case. Well, I know I wasn't. I was there on mostly grants and stuff, so I don't know. I don't know what the tuition was. I was. I, I, I know when I was looking, uh, we was doing college research from my stepdaughter and it was cheaper for her to go out of state than for her to stay at home to go to college. Wow. And, it's, and it funny. was vice, and, and, and it was vice versa. Like students that was coming from out of state had a way cheaper 
uh, had a way different price, cheaper wise than than home. So that's why I, I was just. Uh, also, uh, this episode is not being sponsored by Goalie, but my <laughs> Instagram had just kicked in. Uh, <laughs> my man, my man. So, so if it goes downhill, just know. Hey, Goalie, cut the check. It was, it was Goalie, yeah. So, uh, uh, Big Brother, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really know what DEI was. <laughs> I, I had heard of it, but I didn't look into it. You want me to repeat uh, it? No, you can't if you want to. All you're going to do is make me sleepy. <laughs> oh. Ooh, that was, hey, that was quick, wasn't it? That was quick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jada, that, that was a sneak disc. That wasn't even a sneak disc, big brother. That wasn't even a sneak disc. He, he said bars. that was direct shot. Direct that was shot. bars, yeah. It was, yeah, that was direct. Uh, but, no, I, I have not. But I, I have... I have asked at work for them to put in some type of diversity, the uh, diversity program at my job, just because it is majority white. And sometimes I don't feel like they know how to uh, properly articulate things when they're, when they're speaking to us or they don't know, they don't understand how, you know, the black and brown people may feel on some of the things they may do or say versus uh, our white colleagues. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's all it, hey, that's all the Oscar God gave him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and I, I mean, I, I haven't. I, Joe I haven't. is falling out. <laughs> I was 200 milligrams right there, Rick, brother. That's it. Yeah, he was nah, like, but I mean, um, it, it it was direct. That that's it. I mean, I I haven't, I have not. You know, it hasn't. As far as I know, it hasn't affected me. Like for when I got my job, it wasn't because of that. But I do feel like this is another political ploy. The last the last vote, it was about the wall and the Mexicans. Now it's about DEI. And why people of color should not be vote no shouldn't be given positions into politics. All right. Yeah. And um, when we when we all decided that we were going to do this, and you know, just doing deep dives and things like that, that's what kind of led me into where to ask y'all. Whereas, like to me, it just seemed as though they were painting it as DEI only benefits black people black and brown people but not like jada said it also benefits women it also ben benefits the gay and trans and lesbian community it benefits everyone who is not you know caucasian basically but you know of course caucasian women also so that's why i really wanted to bring it up that way i said because every time they bring it up they're always attaching it to a black or brown person got this job and or position or got into this school with the help of this. But like I said, it's about making every place diverse. And people don't realize that diversity actually benefits a company, a school, and every place. But the more diverse voices you have, the more the better you make your company. And with the equity and inclusion, just making sure that everything is in place so everyone has the same benefits, where just like it says, the law is made for the lawless. Like Jada said, if everyone could be trusted to, to look at everyone as human, we wouldn't need this. This is the only reason that these things are in place to make sure everyone is getting the same opportunities. Not that someone who is less qualified gets something over someone who is overqualified. It's just making sure that we all have the opportunity because obviously certain places can't be trusted to give everyone the same opportunity. And mm -hmm. for me, diversity training is beneficial. And I think it, and now that you're seeing people taking diversity trainings out of companies and things and banning them, how can we, that's to drive a deeper wedge between us because the less you know about a group, the more you are easily to fear a group. So when you hear all these messagings of fear about this group and that group, if you haven't had a lot of training or you don't have these people in your life, you're like, you're like, oh, this is what I'm going to believe about them. So those stereotypes are easier to believe. 
And for me, has DEI, you know, has it benefited me? Yes, of course it has, because I'm sure there wouldn't have been some opportunities or some companies wouldn't have had doors open for me if it wasn't there. Because what people fail to realize, companies and universities have numbers to meet. They have to have a certain percentage of diversity in there. And just like you said at your job, sometimes those managements on the upper don't know how to speak to a black or brown person. That's why other diverse groups need to be up there to teach them. So for us to have this conversation as benefit, because just like you said, a lot of people don't even know what DEI stands for, let alone having it broken down for them and showing them how it benefits them, whether it be, you know, making sure you have the same opportunity, making sure that you feel welcome in the space, making sure things are diverse to make sure that you are, you know, informed about other groups. So, yeah. And the, the diversity training, like, here's a quick example of how I could have benefited from diversity training in terms of me learning about somebody else. I work in IT. And uh, a lot of Indian, so like, you know, from India, if not Native American. I don't know why I felt the need to make that uh, distinction. But <laughs> a lot of people from India in there. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. There's a thing called the Indian head, head nod or something like that. And basically, when they agree with you, they will shake their head back and forth like this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, the, the more they agree with you, the more rigorously they'll shake their head. Well, to me, that looked like you were saying no. And so I would be explaining something technical and like I know I know my technical shit and the person would just be looking at me and they'd be doing that head head shake thing and I'm thinking they're disagreeing with what I'm saying. So now I'm getting upset because I know I know what the fuck I'm talking about. You're not mm -hmm. saying nothing. You're just staring at me shaking your head which is just super disrespectful and the more I keep like making my point the faster you shaking your foot, like and I would, there was people at that job I hate. I didn't find out about the Indian head nod or whatever until I left that job. There was a moment there where I like I had a legit, like when I would see an uh, Indian person walk in a restaurant, like there would just be a feeling that came on. Like I just, you know, because I'd had so many of these bad experiences, but it was all based off a of misunderstanding. If I had just had some diversity training, maybe I would have had a better experience at that job. Is it? Yeah, but it, it certain. Outside of that, because that's something totally different, but shouldn't diversity also be something that's, that's taught at home? Shouldn't that be part of you, you know, you growing up and becoming an adult? Shouldn't that be something you should already know? That's, 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 that's that shoe. How, how, how yeah. can you know it if the people in your household haven't traveled, haven't been trained, haven't had interaction with other cultures. See, this is the thing sometimes, and I think Joe speaks a lot to this and what well, we all do, where we're all so much in our bubbles mm -hmm. that you might not understand yet, you know, you, I don't know, how can I know if I've never been in that community, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, so that's why it still is important where diversity needs to be taught everywhere, whether it's jobs, school and things like that. That's kind of like where, I had this one person, <laughs> Caucasian person, and she kept referring to me as homeboy. Yeah. And the first time I was like, all right, let me just let this go. Then the second time she said it, I literally had to pull her to the side. And I told her, don't you ever refer to me that way again? Because I knew what she really, what really meant and what she really wanted to say. So with training like this, it, I believe it keeps you from saying little things you think are fine or comfortable or, you know, may just be words in passing and things like that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I get it. Like, like with, with, with Jay's situation, that is something that definitely should have been brought to the table professionally. But outside of just, you know, me we, meeting a white person or me meeting a Hispanic person, I just feel like that's something culturally wise. That's something we should know, or maybe that's something they should start teaching in schools. That's, what I was as, say. that's, that's a lot of this stuff. Instead of, you know, teaching the, the kids how to do a paper, freaking paper airplanes and build cars out of wood, we should be able to teach them shit like this. You know what I mean? So when they, they go out, especially now in these times, uh, it's a little different, you know, and uh, teaching them about diversity and 
teaching them all these kinds of stuff so they're prepared to come out because now you know they they don't start learning this shit until they get into the struggle you know 20 years later right whatever it is and you know you have to learn it from somewhere at work i mean it's i mean sorry big brother i didn't mean to cut you off oh no no but that that was perfectly said no i was going to say but it also teaches you how to speak to just everyone like you don't refer to a woman as a girl like can you tell that girl from downstairs to come up to the office but what do you what do you that that's a woman what do you a girl you know just things like that yeah well i mean you should be using her name <laughs> if anything i, I ask you <laughs> hey what 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 is that young lady's name that works downstairs instead of instead of just calling her you know tell the woman to come up at that that sounds savage yeah, or 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 if you if you if you have you know trans LGBTQ women, I mean people working, and you refer to them as a derogatory term, you know mm -hmm. those are the type of trains that keep that from coming out your mouth. Or like, you know, if Joe, can you imagine if whatever slang word hurts a Latin person's feeling, and some you heard someone use it at work? What was the question? <laughs> no, I, no, I said, I said, can you imagine just one, just some derogatory term for Latins and somebody used it at work? Oh yeah, I mean, I don't know. I hear, I hear it all the time. You'll it. probably flip. It. You heard, heard it? it? Yeah, I've heard, I heard it. You know, I've heard it, and you know, most of the places that I ever worked, um, you know, because there's a lot of Hispanics here in Arizona. I mean, yeah. it, uh, they're they're not very liked. And, uh, you know, people say shit, you know what I mean? And what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Go beat the shit out of everybody. I mean, you can't, you know, you get fired and you can't get another job. You know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, you just kind of frown, right? You're kind of like, what, you know, what, like, why, why would you talk to people like that? You know what I mean? There's, uh, uh, there's no respect. Yeah, after. Yeah, I mean, I heard yeah. You see Willie's face when you say, "What you gonna do?" Be sure everybody. Willie looked at like, man, that's what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's what needs to be done. All right, man, Wait, you need, you need, you know, you need people to like join in, and some people are just like, they're like, "This is the only thing I got." You know what I mean? And they don't want to get dirty. You know what I mean? So you're out there fighting for everybody else, and then when the time comes, it's like, "Come on, man, speak up!" And they're just like, "Oh, well, I need, I need my job," and then now you look like a dumbass. Cause you're the only one that's speaking up, you know what I mean? And that's I think, uh, I think for me, it just, it, it just, it just blows my mind how some people are just so programmed to where they're not going to learn nothing new or try to understand anybody or anything. This is like, this, this is what, this is what I was taught. And this is what it is. There is nothing else. And it just blows my mind, you know. You, you try to explain stuff to them, they like, nah, they don't, they didn't, it ain't, it ain't how my mama taught me. I'm like, well, your mama's a lie, and <laughs> so I don't you know said your mama's a lie. Just because, just because it's what your mama told you, don't mean that it was right. That's all I'm. That's all I gotta say. So but, I mean, uh, exactly. So if people yeah. aren't traveled, you know they're just stuck in that bubble and what they learn from their mama and their mama is a lie. But that's just yeah. like when, I don't know if this fits well into what we're talking about. When that was, when my mom was blown, when who was it? J dot's job made him celebrate Confederates day. Yeah. I could have got, I was like, I could have been done. I was like, that's all right, weird. that's enough for this episode. That's weird. See that, that day, <laughs> that day I would have been, I would have been finding somebody. There would have been an email or something like I did. Um, I don't know if y'all heard the story. Like when we we was having a we was having a meeting, and this was like, I think we was just like right out of the pandemic and Brianna Taylor, and we was having a meeting, and the guy, his analogy was to was to call everybody a monkey, mm. and we kind of like like I'm I'm in a row and then like all the brothers that sitting behind me and I kind of do like this weird, like I kind of like, uh, we all kind of like get our head nod like this, like, did he just want, and I kind of did like a slow, like turn, like looking behind me. Like I was doing it, like trying to be on those, but looked at my dude and he was like, yeah, he just said that. 
So then after the meeting, you know, we were still kind of like taken back. So it was like, well, what, what the fuck you mean, monkey? You know what I'm saying? So, so then I had to, because I'm like the highest, one of the highest uh, on you know, seniority black guys in the company that's been there for a while, I sent the email to the operations manager. like, hey, man, I need to talk to you about this meeting because uh, ain't no monkeys here. So that's when that's when we had a meeting. I had a meeting with um, HR operational and the guy who said it and stuff. And it was funny. He's like, "Yeah, no, I'm a uh, I'm a history buff and all this stuff." I said, "Well, if you're a history buff, then why the hell would you want to want black people to refer to themselves as monkeys?" Of course, he couldn't answer that. He was like, "I don't know what I was thinking," but it wasn't it wasn't meant to be. I was like, "It doesn't matter what you meant." It matters how we took it. And being that majority of your workforce is black, that's something that you probably should have took in and 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 you know and and comprehended before you said it. And then that's when I you know I recommend we we need to do y'all y'all need to install some type of diversity program here because you know, with the whole um you know, we had like the um marches and all that stuff you know during the 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 racial the uh racial tension you know we was yeah. like we was on yeah. lockdown you know what i mean and then like there was one point where they gave us a a piece of paper in case we got pulled over yeah. and because like some of us you know we we had a report we reported working like three or four o'clock in the morning well, a lot of the streets were still shut down because they were still they'd be protesting at four or five o'clock in the morning. So we was we was on a, a curfew. You know what I'm saying? So you couldn't be out in such and such hours, otherwise you you know they'd pull you over. So they just give us a piece of paper. So in my mind, I'm like, dude, this is like you. This is like a piece of paper you would give a slave when he leaves the plantation. He has he has this you no know, this right to do this and do that. It's like y'all didn't even take into consideration. Like what about us who has to travel three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning to be at work, and all we got is a little piece of paper. Exactly. That's not that's not like authentic for <laughs> the show police. And then on top of that, the city's heightened. So now we like, well, hell, I'm looking behind my, I'm looking in my mirror every three minutes to see if I'm being, if I'm being followed, I'm about to get pulled over by the police. And all I got is this piece of paper in my wallet to tell them I'm on my way to work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, dude, y'all, y'all, y'all need to, yeah, we, we need some type of diversity program here. Cause this, what, what y'all not thinking is it, not working. Yeah. And I think that you know, not to prolong this segment, but, you know, sometimes things are in place to assist and benefit and almost are invisible to people and people don't even know that it's working in the background for them. So when they hear that people are coming against it, trying to pull it out, they're like, oh, okay. But people need to realize that, like I said at the beginning, the law is made for the lawless. Some things, uh, things are put in place because people, places, and things cannot be trusted to do the right thing. So when you hear about these things, I strongly suggest people do their research about what it is, how it benefits them, so they can compare to how either media or just talking heads are trying to use it to benefit their platform or to further drive a wedge and or agenda. So it's not about us talking about it just to be, you know, controversial or salacious. It's more about like, hey, Understand there are, are things that were put in place before you were born during your lifetime that have been put in place to help you. So figure it out, learn about it and educate yourself. And like I said, you know, when I love how Maya Angelou say, you know, when you learn, teach, you know, tell the till tell yourself the truth first and then tell the children. Tell. I All think I'm saying the, is. All I'm saying is if we had diversity program, they wouldn't have been passing that Valentine's Day candy during Black History Month. That's what I, that's, that's all I'm saying. They would have they would have they would have had I'm just saying. I'm sorry to cut well, you off, brother. I'm no, sorry. but 
I, I really love, I love what everyone has said. I truly do. And, and like Joe said, instead of teaching us how to carve a car out of wood, teach these kids some diversity, mm -hmm. teach them something that they're going to need when they get to their college campus. So if they get a roommate like J dots or a roommate that wants to bring it up, they know how to, they know what they're talking about. Quick question, J dot. So when y'all introduced each other, was it like, hey, what's up, brother? Yo, 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 what's up, Jay? <laughs> how, how, how was that interaction? Hey, man, you want to nah. go down the store and get some 40s? I mean, I mean, was it like some over the top? No, nah, yeah. he was he was at least sensitive enough to understand it. Like, yeah, that we, we didn't need to do all that. It was it was very much a cultural exchange. You know where I got a lot of that, though? I got a lot of that when I worked at the White House. You'd be mm. amazed. I would walk through certain areas and dudes would have would pull their Jay-Z CDs out, put them on their desk. What's that? You know how many times I heard was cracking pimp in the White House? Yeah. At the White House. And now from a black person. What the hell? What's going on, homie? What's what's good, bro? Like all that. And these dudes are from Texas. Oh, trying to was Texas. Yeah. Jeez. And I had to just sit there and be like, and eh, nah, it's going. Like, I'd rather you not. Like, I don't even talk to my friends like that. I don't know why you talking to me like that. But mm -hmm. yeah. I ain't said what's cracking pimp in my life. I don't think I never said that shit. But, you know. And see, that's the thing. Like, so when you correct them, now you, you, you aggressive. Now you woke. <laughs> hey, yeah. buddy, I just, I was just trying to see how you were doing. That's it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, nah, no, nah, you, nah, you don't, no. Nah. <sighs> All right. I, yeah. I know. I, I, I think. Well, I, I, one of the hardest lessons I ever had to learn was that, like, that even in the black community, like, we don't all, you can't just walk, as a black person, I can't walk up to another black man and be like, what's up, dog? I did that one time to an older black dude uh, downtown D.C., and the way that dude went off on me, yeah, like, I, I understood right then and there, okay, nope, that's, that's a very, you got to know somebody, that's a very individual thing, yeah. like, you just can't. You can't you assume everybody goes like that. I hate when people say hey. <laughs> my, my name's my name's not hey. You know what I'm saying? My my name's Willie, or you can call me, you know, by my formal name, but it's not it's not hey. Especially if you know my name. Oh, that irritate. I, that's why I always feel like I'm that old black guy at work. Don't don't call me hey. What's up, what's up, what's up? I got one guy, he used to, uh, he used to, what's up, fool? What's, <laughs> what's up, up bitch? What's, what? Well, damn, that was, well, I mean, hey, I mean, I'm not a fool. So, I mean, if, if, if you, a fool, if I'm a fool, then you, I, I see you as a bitch. So, oh, God. Hey, so, hey. Hey, 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 we can run hey. this game if you want to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We can do this all damn day. So, but, so. That that doesn't happen. No you more. see, Joe, that's that's how you handle it. That's how you that's handle how you it. You gotta call the bitches. That's what Joe, you gotta I'm do. A, I'm a what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a Patreon and you come and take my classes on how to deflect the things that I say to you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you are gonna have to throw a couple punches and you are gonna have to call a couple people bitches, Joe. But you are gonna get them straightened up. You gonna yeah. get them straightened up. Yeah, every, every now, <laughs> hey, hey, every now and then you got you got to move a table or two, Joe. Don't just don't you, no. You got to be loud. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? Hey, I'm gonna tell you something that you should do, Joe. Every now and then, just go walk through work like y'all got me fucked up, and it don't be nobody <laughs> around. You. you just you just see it random. You just see what they do. You see you see how how many oh. people really care about you. You okay? You okay, Joseph? Are you are you are you all right, You're Joseph? <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. Just hey, just do it. Just this ran. Yeah, got me. Oh, uh, just just randomly, just 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 yell out stuff randomly with nobody around you, and just see see how they see what they do. <laughs> I like the other one. No one around. Y'all got. <laughs> oh shit, that's funny. Oh. Oh, that's a good one, y'all. That was a good one. I, 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 I do, I'm, I do appreciate you diving into the DEI because I, that was the first time I heard about the D whole DEI thing was, ah oh, man, I can't remember his name, the uh, mayor for Baltimore. 
Oh yeah, when they say he and was I'm, a DEI hire. Yeah, and I was like, what the hell is DEI? I didn't I didn't know and no, I didn't do the research like I would normally do, but I didn't know uh the full extent of it. So, but now I do. So I, I appreciate you, big brother. No, that's a good thing about our show. You know, we all learn from one another. Yep. That's all right, Joe, what kind of shenanigans you got for us this uh, week? Oh yeah, I got some good stuff. <laughs> uh, are you ready for this so i i switched it up a little bit so i had to work on a, a few things here but uh we're gonna we're gonna lighten up the mood right no more dei and uh in honor of uh it, this month is special i'm gonna play you a little song all right you hear it no 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 <laughs> What is no. it? What song is it? Never mind. It's supposed like to be connected one. to the road. I got really nodded and said first, and it was like, it, no. no. <laughs> so, well, never mind. It's, hey, it's it's connected to this thing. I don't know why it's not. It's supposed to go straight to the thing. Ah, forget it. Anyways, real you quick. You can sing it for us, Joe. Uh, sing. Yeah. <laughs> There's no words to it. But ah. so here we go. We're going to start with J. Dot. J. Dot. Star Wars or Star Trek, and what character would you be? That's right. your first question. Uh, all right, so that, that's an easy question. Uh, well, Star Trek well, people, are, uh, Star Trek people are nerds. Star uh, Trek people are straight up nerds. Super nerds. Uh, I don't, I don't subscribe to it. I can't, I can't agree with it. So Star Wars, all the way. Who wouldn't want a lightsaber? Ain't nothing as cool as a lightsaber in the whole Star Trek universe. They don't have that. All they do is teleport, and I'd be scared of shit of that. I don't understand who was the first person to sign up for teleport <laughs> testing. <laughs> I'm sure it was a black or brown person too. They was like, "Yeah, hey, we don't care if you don't come out on the other side. Let's see what happens." That's but funny. I'm going Star Wars. I, I I need to be a Jedi, maybe a Mace Windu type. He was the only black dude. Why are they be making it seem like it ain't no black people in the future all the time? That is hey, weird. It'd be like three or four of us <laughs> someplace Talk answering about. phones or something. Yeah, but they need know, D, they need DEI. We need DEI in the future. <laughs> don't worry about now. That's what happens future. if you don't get any DEI. You're gonna be none of us over there. Yeah. But yeah, I'm all definitely right. a Star Wars person. And give me a lightsaber and uh, all that good stuff. Okay. All right. Will Star Wars, Star Trek, and what character? It's definitely Star Wars. Um, I don't know the characters by name. But yeah, uh, it'll be somebody black. I don't want to be Anakin. I don't. I don't want to be him. You be, uh, Land you be Lando. There we go. We be Lando. I'll be the smooth brother, you know, with some cavassier in, in the cockpit. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Something like it. Yeah. I, but but, but he, he he uh he sold him out and then got back good later on. But he sold him out first. It doesn't matter because do I'm 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 the only black guy, so I'm playing both sides. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a win-win for me. DEI. <laughs> yeah. Both sides. All right. Okay, big brother. Your way, Star Wars, Star Trek. What character? Um, I would definitely have to stay Star Wars. I'd probably be Boba Fett. I'd be a bounty hunter. I'm gonna come get you. Dang. You know why he'd be Boba Fett. You know, now it ain't about the bounty hunter thing. It's about he get to wear a mask the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he got you, big brother. Yeah, yeah he got I you. didn't think about that, but yeah. Boba Fett, I'm 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 coming to get you. Oh man. All right. Here we go. Second question. What about you, Joe? Oh, me? Oh yeah, I forgot about myself. Um I would do Star Trek. I'll do Star Trek and I would be Bones. I would be the doctor. Is that because okay. there's there's more Mexican on Star Trek than it is Star Wars? Yeah, there's a lot more. There's different people from different places in the galaxy, all together, and they all would look weird. And yeah, that's uh, there's diversity in there. Now, <laughs> I, I'll take I mean, back the nerd comment, Joe. Um, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> what will? I don't want to step no line. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Do it, Will. Do it. <laughs> Will's like, well, I'm too hot. Will, like, well, I'm too hot. I'll, Just go I'll ahead. I say, like, Chewbacca. That's, is, is that, like, the closest Chewbacca it would be? Dope. I like Chewbacca. Too Hispanic? Yeah. Well, no. 
I did see. No. <laughs> there was a joke. Yeah, that, I, I'm trying not to even laugh at that one. That was, there, that was, was, that there was a joke really about that. That was big brother. <laughs> no, but I, I, I've I've seen that he was like supposed to be the one that rep, that had represented. Yeah, because of his thing. And he's a mechanic. And he's a mechanic. And he's yeah. a mechanic. What? Why are everybody, oh, y'all? Every, why, everybody, why? Will is going to HR office this week, y'all. Will's the one that's coming to the HR office. And he's week. brown. I just want to see how long you're going to let this go, big brother. You're just letting it fly uh, right now. Uh, I think we should move on. I think we should move on. Next, Will, I guess, yeah. see me yeah, in next, HR. Hey, yes, sir. Hey, uh, before I go to my next question, there's this uh, comic. I can't remember what his name is. He's from California, and he has just a skit on the Chewbacca and the Mexicans, why Chewbacca is Mexican. I'll find it and I'll send it to you guys. It's pretty funny because it makes sense. I'm like, oh, damn, I guess it does make sense. Anyways, second question. Now we're going to go the other way around. Big Brother, epic encounters. Have you ever met anybody famous? Have you ever said anything to them? What did you say? Who was it? Um, I met a few people famous, but um, off the top of my head, Little Kim. Oh, shit. Walking around in New York, uh, bumped into her. She was coming out, I believe it was Louis Vuitton, and you know, just a, a nice brief conversation, just a lovely woman. So yeah, I would say little Kim. Yeah. Nice. And she transformed into the, the ghoulish creature that she is now, or was she still Lee, like, don't do that. Her? That she's a beautiful woman. I met her, she's a beautiful and just as sweet as you just want, just sweet, just a nice woman. I mean that's her. That's a case study on like self esteem and not letting people talk you into change. Like she was a beautiful woman. I'm not sure what it is she is now. Like a beautiful woman. She's a beautiful woman. Is that the lady that had been taken to the hospital? Yeah, yeah, Joe. Yeah. Before you oh, even say, yeah, yeah, Joe. Yeah, Joe. Bunch of stuff pumped out her stomach at one point. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. a beautiful her. woman, a beautiful soul. She was very kind to me. Thank you, little Kim. It was a pleasure meeting you. Okay. Will. Epic encounter, Will. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I think it will probably be I met um a few years back. I had I, I was I bounced at a derby uh at a club and they oh, had me in the v, they had me in the VIP section and uh Bubble Sparks was behind me uh, a few of the cast members of Entourage okay. was also there. So I uh, met them, made some made some pretty good tip money that night. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say oh, I actually just told this story recently. Um, <laughs> the I think it was the first night. It was the first night? No, it was, the, it was the last night that I worked. They had me working the door, checking. Um, I think I was just I was checking for age and all because it's a bar or it's a club, and it was two <clears throat> guys and a female walked up. They got uh got their hair slicked back, grew gelled up, got chains, looking pretty fly. It's like yeah, we on the VIP list. I was like, well, you got to go around back for the VIP entrance. And it was like, no, I'm on the list. I was like, yeah, I get that. I was like, but I can't let you in. You got to go around back. So the one, the one smooth guy was like, you know what? Don't even worry about it. And they just smoothly just left, right? About 10 minutes later, one of the guys I was working with tapped me on my shoulder. He's like, do you know who that was? I was like, no. Nah. It was like... I said that that's the that's the kids from the grown up Gotti show. I said, oh, Ooh. I said, oh, that's gonna that, be a that lot. was your last night at the bouncer. That was it. <laughs> it. It was only for two nights, but I was like, dude, that's gonna be a long walk to the garage. I was like, <sighs> I didn't know. So yeah, I I met them. The the they I don't know how I'm guess they was in twenty something because I never watched the show, but I, I know they. I knew there was a show, but I didn't know it was them. I, I paid good money to see you as a bouncer. With I, I feel like that's a show on it in and of itself. You could have had a whole had reality a, TV show. I actually had a guy give me a fifty dollar tip just based off I, how I laugh. <laughs> he said I laughed like his best friend that had just passed like three months ago, and he came back 
and gave me fifty bucks. Yeah. I had After one guy give, huh? Before the whole dead best friend uh, story, I thought I was going to ask you if that was Diddy or not, but it's cool. <laughs> no, uh, and then uh, one guy gave me twenty bucks just for just for pointing in the direction of the nearest restroom. I made like I made like three fifty in tips as a bouncer. <laughs> pretty good, man. Yeah, it was. It was pretty good. It was good money that weekend. But yeah, that was my. I got other ones, but I didn't like go and talk to them and see them. Okay, pretty dope. J dot epic encounter. Thank you, Will. I got I got a couple of them. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through. I didn't speak to any of them. Um, so they're going to be quick stories. And I also want to see if y'all going to recognize one of these names. I'm just interested. But uh, I ran into Prince and I was working at uh, International Airport, nice. I think in Puerto Rico. And he flew in. Uh, didn't realize how short that dude really was. And uh, one of the weirdest people I've ever, he was he was being interviewed by the customs agent. And it was him, uh, like a, an Asian woman and two big bodyguards. And every time the customs agent would ask him something, he would, would lean over and whisper in the Asian woman's ear, and then she would answer the question for him. And he did this like six questions in a row. It was the craziest thing I had ever seen. And uh, I, But I realized because of the two big dudes, there wasn't no point in me walking over there to try to say nothing to him, so I didn't do that. Um, I ran into, I don't know if you watched The Wire, but I was at a party with Snoop from The Wire. Oh, okay, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. I definitely wanted to talk to her. But I couldn't think of nothing gangster enough to say to her. I just felt like whatever I walked up and said it was going to be too, too funky. Like it wasn't going to be hard enough <laughs> for Snoop. So I didn't say nothing to her. And the other person I didn't speak to is uh, I sat next to Roxy Reynolds at a bar and ate a steak. I don't know if you know who Roxy Reynolds is. I'm waiting to see faces change. Nobody face change. So I no, guess I'm off. Awesome. No, not, not, not that Roxy Reynolds. This is, uh, it is, yeah, I'm the only pervert here. It's cool though. But yeah, I didn't speak to her. She's a porno star. I didn't speak to her either. I just sat there and was like, damn, that's Roxy Reynolds right there. I wonder, but nah. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. That's dope. I like that. I like that. Uh let's see. Uh who have I um I met a I've seen a few people, DMX. DMX was out at the mall in Arizona, you know, because he was like arrested over here all the time. And uh he was uh he was walking around barking you know like barking through the mall doing his doing his bark uh, a bunch yeah. of people were there they were like holy shit and i just got to see him from far away he was also he's kind of a little guy uh but buff kind of like vicious looking you know he was badass and uh and then he had uh, mike tyson pit was in the mall. huh they looked like them pit bulls in cleveland and yeah like cleveland <laughs> and then uh uh mike tyson was at the same mall my uncle used to work at the mall he was like um some kind of maintenance guy or something. And he would tell me like, you know, Hey, there's some, there's people over here. So I just got to see him from far away. And also Mike Tyson just came out of jail from here. So I guess that's the mall they all go to when they leave yeah. jail. And then leave jail. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then the only person I actually met personally was uh, Charles Barkley. Uh, I met him at the mall and I asked him if I could have an autograph. And he looked at me and he said, you got any money? And I, clapped. <laughs> I thought it was funny. And then he's all like, you don't got any money. I'm not going to give you an autograph. And he walked away from me. That was it. <laughs> I was like, what? I, I, yeah. I, I've heard that. That's how he, that's how he is. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, I guess I didn't get shit. So that's it. That's, I mean, that's as I, much contact as I have with famous people. I did. Uh, I ran to uh DA at the mall, Derek Anderson. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Uh, I think he was. It was. I think it was at Foot Locker. He was standing outside signing autographs. It was one. It was one of those shoe stores in the mall, and uh, I just walked past him because I. I literally. I, I was on a mission. I just want to go get my shoes, and I wanted to leave. I wasn't. I'm not. Whenever I see people, I'm not like a fan. I don't fan out. You know what I mean? So, like I've I, I've seen. Um, What's your guy, the guy's name who played Daryl on uh, Walking oh, yeah. Dead? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was like, uh, I had just went to the restroom 
at uh, our old at my uh, old place, and he was just outside. He was actually filming the ride, the ride show, his motorcycle show this, okay. that he does. He was st- he was outside at a donut shop. Him and another actor. But I didn't see like that. I would, I would, I don't know. I would have felt weird. Yeah. Go run across the street, dodging cars just to say hi. <laughs> get a picture. I was just like, yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. You I'm know? with you, Willie. I think that's part of my my toxic masculinity. Like, yeah, I can't I can't allow myself to fan out, can't, especially if it's a dude. Like, I can't yeah. like be trying hard to get a picture with another dude. Like, that just bothers me. So, yeah, right. if you I, saw Jay Z, you wouldn't fan out. Nah. Nah, I would hope that he could recognize that I was as cool as he was from across the room. Right. Like, the energy. right. We just, <laughs> yeah. but it couldn't be. I ain't running over there because now I lost all my cool points because yeah. I ran over. Yeah. At, at some point, you gotta, you wanna, you wanna have that same um, type of composure when you see him. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, what's up? You good? And then keep walking, not yeah. get the pictures and get an autograph. Like, I got the visual. I seen you. I'm good. You see me. I see you. I'm good. I think a lot of it, like, also, like, uh, you know, with that kind of lifestyle, I feel like sometimes they want to be treated normal. Yeah. You know, they just they don't want to be like, just say hi. Like, for instance, I was at a golf tournament for the company golf tournament, and they have these charity golf tournaments that we go around, and we have to show up with take customers with us, right? And uh, at uh, they they give you, they provide you lunch, and uh, after lunch they have like they give you you know you have you buy tickets for it was for uh, children's Phoenix Phoenix Children's Hospital for the children, and uh, I don't know where I see I don't know if you watch a lot of uh, UFC but I saw Justin Gagey he was the guy that just got knocked out cold uh, by Max Holloway uh, about two weeks ago three weeks ago or whatever it was and he's he was a champ USU champ all kinds of stuff and. <clears throat> I, I looked at him from he was standing down by himself, but he was out he was there playing the tournament and I was like, is that nah, there's no way he wouldn't be out here in Arizona? Well, he's from Arizona. And uh, you know, so finally I see a bunch of dudes running over there, man, running over there, trying to take pictures and selfies with him. And, you know, I, I was like, damn, that must feel uncomfortable. So uh the show ended, I was going back to the truck, take, you know, grab my customers, take them home, and uh I re- I was right next to him. <clears throat> And uh, I just kind of patted on the on the shoulder, you know, like, you know, what's up, champ? And I just kept walking. And he's like, what up, man? And just, that was it. And, you know, I don't want to you know, take any pictures or bug you. I mean, his family was there. And I'm sure those people are constantly barraged by paparazzis and people jumping all over them. So, I mean, that's how I feel. If I, if I was one of those people, I was rich, I would just want to be treated just like anybody else. But I think it's sometimes the it's the initial shock of seeing a person because your mind is trying to calculate like, oh shoot, is this really? Oh, it is them. And sometimes it might just be that knee jerk reaction that gets you fanning out. Yeah, kind of like Keanu Reeves, man. He just goes around New York, just like a regular yeah. person. Pretty yeah. cool. Uh, the guy I was talking about is Norman Reedus. That's Norman Reedus. Reedus. Yeah. yeah, Norman Reedus. Now, what's crazy was you know we had a. Uh, the derby last week and somebody posted how uh bruno mars he was just chilling and i don't want to call it like the hood he was in a spot you wouldn't expect to see bruno mars <laughs> he was in a neighborhood you wouldn't like literally you i'm like what the hell was he doing there but he was outside eating at a um at a black restaurant okay that was the bruno mars yeah, yeah. Which I was like, man, it like mm-hmm. I expected him to go so I would not saying he he normally would, but at like a more high scale type restaurant, but he was not nah, sitting outside eating and drinking with the common yeah, folks. Speaking of DEI, Bruno Mars looked like he every race and ethnicity and gender <laughs> at the same time. Joe, do you got any more questions for us? Uh so we can move on before we cross but, the but 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 I was <laughs> gonna say all your listeners. So, if you one of your listeners to your show ran up, you wouldn't want them to ask you for a picture, or you wouldn't know how to act if they asked y'all for a picture. I would be uncomfortable as hell. Would you? I would. I would. I would do it, but it also, but it also depends on how they how they do it. 
I have so few listeners that I feel like if you run it, if you listen to my show to the point that you running up on me in public, you a stalker. And I need it. I need it. Hey, Jay, because we'd be like, how you know my name? Facts. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, you, you, like, like, like they run up name? to you, like, yo, I know your show. I listen to your show. Like, hey, you, you run up on me for talking about Chef Elise? I'm like, oh, no. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, but you son. put it out there. Hey, yeah, uh, but but we're talking about introverts. Like we're we we're not used to that type of contact. You know what I'm saying? But, now, but, it, it would it would be cool, but at the same time, I'm I'm looking at you like you suspicious. Because the thing is, you know, you have shows, you have listeners, mm-hmm. and the audiences are growing. So eventually it's going to happen. So that's why I just threw that out there. Like you said you will be uncomfortable. J Dot say he'll be like, oh, be a stalker. Joe say he wants to be treated like a regular person. Well, you want to hear something funny? Is like, I don't know if I told you this. I told you guys this or not, but like six months ago or whatever it was, I put an order in for groceries and uh, I was running low on time. So I usually, when I put the groceries in, I'm going to go pick them up at five, right? And I show up to go, you park outside, right? And you get there, you put the, the car number, the spot, and they go out there. And uh, I I don't like them putting my stuff in the in the car. I feel like they're doing already enough by bringing the groceries out. So I come out and I help them, right? Got the bags and put them in the put them in the truck and you know all that shit. And the guy looks at me and goes, "Hey man, you're the guy from that show." And then I, was like, <laughs> I thought he was gonna say like the '70s show or something, you know, <laughs> like some yeah some shit like that. And I'm like, well, "What show is that?" He's all like, "The podcast." And I was like. Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah, I listen to your show. I didn't know you lived in See? Arizona. And I was like, See? yeah, and he just kind of gave me a little bump, like a fist bump. And uh, yeah. he's like, that's weird. And then he's like, that's really weird. And he just walked away. That was it. Let, let me explain a bit, big brother, because this is what happens to me. I don't get, I've never been in Joe's position where somebody like out and about, like recognize me from something. But people will like DM me or see me online and start, ha- and they will start having a conversation with me like I just recorded the podcast five minutes ago and whatever it is I said, like we in the middle of that conversation. Like somebody just hit me up like, well, see the reason why I'd rather be with a bear in the woods. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Bear? What are we talking about? What happened? But, that, but that's <laughs> the thing you have to realize because, and I'm just saying this, you know, they look at us, look at y'all as like friends, family. So they feel as though like, oh, I know this person. I can just start talking to them. And Jada, you have several shows. So of course, you know, it's, it, you know, that's and they I, just feel very that, familiar with it. I've been doing this for six years. Cause just because you heard it today don't mean I remotely remember ever saying that shit. <laughs> but that's <laughs> like, but that, you that, that some context before you start talking to me. Some context, please. So, oh, that, so, that, you, that, so you so you just gonna be Charles Barkley of the crew. <laughs> See, that, I, mean, I, I don't need your money. If, even if you had money, you ain't getting an autograph picture from me. But, See, that, that, but that that's why I was saying it depends on how they approach us. You know what I mean? So they're like, hey, think about us. So, yeah, hey, what's going on? Thanks for listening. You know, can I get a picture? <laughs> Look at what <laughs> really was that a picture of what? Yeah, I mean, got five bucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put it on Instagram and you can save it. How about that? You know. Yeah. Oh, it was good. Joe, you got any, you got you got another one? We good. We're good, man. We're good. All right, all right. We got any um closing statements? Are we everybody good? I, I love fans. I appreciate if you are a fan, you know, that means a lot to me. Just yeah. Have the logo on or something. That's something that I can know what it I is. I love how he's trying to clean it up. <laughs> don't, don't start talking to me about what I something I said about little people or nugget porn or something just not, randomly. Not somewhere. little. Like, <laughs> say something. Yeah. What? Give me some what? context first, please. I, 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 I love that. Is that a real thing? Nugget porn. Nugget porn. Yeah. Don't don't look it up. Don't look it up. Don't Google it. Don't don't do it. See so. He's Googling it right now. Don't do it. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. All right. <laughs> Joe, tell the people where they can find uh, you, man. Uh, yeah. Joe, the host of uh, Bold Talk by Joe podcast. And you can find me on Spotify, Apple Music, Good Pods, and uh, YouTube. Also, please follow us on uh, the League of Kings podcast on YouTube. Thank you very much. Big brother.
I am the resident big brother. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to all the listeners for the, listening to the show, making us the people's new favorite show to listen to. But you can also catch me on my show, Big Brother Advice Podcast, available on all streaming networks. New episodes come on Thursday. Big Brother Advice, community, motivation, encouragement. No, sir. It was the way you said it. You said, like, yeah, I also have a show as well. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Jay. Dot. I mean, I just, I just, I gotta beat this horse to death. I'm just saying, Dave Chappelle used to talk about people just walk up to him talking about, uh, I'm Rick James, bitch, something like that. I'm rich, bitch. And he's like, can't do that. <laughs> My kid is right here. I'm just saying, <laughs> a little bit of, a little bit of context goes a long way. But yeah, what is TWS podcast on Mondays? I have the one, uh, one man and one woman the podcast on Fridays. And then you can also catch me on Opulence Radio on a couple of shows throughout the week. So I'm out there. And I am Willie, half of the Thing About Us podcast that I co-host with my lovely wife, Fiona, where we talk all relationships. And we are also streaming on all platforms. Uh, make sure y'all check each and one of these show, each and every one of these shows out uh, at your prefer, uh, preferred platform. I said what the hell I said. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> hey goalie cut the check <laughs> yo i'm gonna have to start checking these people's bank accounts because y'all been plugging a lot of stuff and i ain't seen nothing near <laughs> commission check yet That's joe it. have you um we some pills we'll make sure you get your cup big brother we got you we'll send you just oh, yeah. a, uh when you get the when you get a case of snickers from me you'll know what will happen Oh, you you better cut. I said I'd be Boba Fett. I'm gonna come get you. <laughs> Matter of fact, Snickers cut the check. Turning into the league. Of